Maybe you think you make very conscious decisions, especially purchase decisions. About 95% of a decision is made down there in the subconscious. If you want to know what happens down there, stay tuned to this vlog. This is a picture of a brain. This is a brain. Our brain has a very key function. It's there to help us survive on this earth as best as possible. And to do that, it needs to make decisions day in, day out. It makes thousands of decisions. And we tend to think that our decisions are a very conscious process. However, they're not. We know nowadays that the conscious part of a decision is about 5%, which means the unconscious part is how much? 95%. And that, of course, is because our brain works mainly unconsciously. Every second our brain processes humongous amounts of data. The unconscious mind processes 11 million pieces of data per second. 11 million bits of data Per second. How much do you think the conscious mind processes? It starts with a four, then a zero, and that's it. 40 bits of data. That's all our conscious mind processes per second. So that means when making a decision, our subconscious mind can take very short amount of time, process loads of data, where our conscious mind will take loads of time to process very little bits of data. You can add up the mass of how long it takes at 40 bits a second to calculate 11 million bits. That's our brain. It makes decisions. When we put people in brain scanners, fMRI scanners, here's a picture of one, and we watch their brains making decisions, we can predict them. We can predict purchase decisions, we can predict many different types of decisions. Not only can we predict them, if this is a clock, we can predict them before the person makes them consciously. How many seconds do you think we can predict a decision before you consciously make one? The answer? is about seven to 10 seconds. Seven to 10 seconds before you make a decision consciously, your subconscious mind has already done it. So that's a really exciting question. What does the brain do in these seven to 10 seconds and what does it do beforehand that we don't even notice to come up with a decision to go for option A or option B? First of all, let's talk about what the product of that decision is. The product of that subconscious decision is what we would call a gut feeling. A gut feeling that says something is not good for us, or we don't want it, or something is good and attractive for us. That would be a very simple decision. But a gut feeling can also be a decision when we have plenty of different options. We might be thinking about option A, B, C, or D. We might, for example, be going out to purchase a nice new curved TV. And you know when you're purchasing a TV, shoes, you know, anything, you do tend to get this gut feeling of which one you'd really like most. And that's your subconscious decision. That is a load of processing that's gone on in the subconscious mind to say, okay, I prefer option D most. I just like it most. Let's have a look at how that decision is made. When the brain is presented by different options, it goes through this process for every single option. It has in the brain what it calls decision accounts. Well, it doesn't really have them in the brain. This is just a great way of visualizing what the brain does. It's a hugely complex process. Because to come up with that decision, the brain processes per single option over 100 million pieces of data to come up with the decision which of those four options is the right one for me. What does it do? 
Well, first of all, we need to know where the data comes from. So the brain has loads of hard disks. And in those hard disks, it has and in those hard disks, it has every emotion, positive or negative, we've ever had with each of the options. It has everything we've ever thought about each of the options. It has everything we've ever seen, smelt, or even touched with our hands. Here's a hand. Ooh, that's a hand. Every interaction and experience of memory with each of the different options is saved down there in the subconscious mind hundreds of millions of pieces of data there. So the brain gets each single piece of data, each of those hundred million pieces of data, brings it into its subconscious working memory and puts it in accounts and asks the question of how rewarding would each option be? And also asks the question of how punishing would each option be? And then it looks down and takes every single piece of this data and says, OK, when we look at the emotion I had on that day with this product, it was really good. Let's say that was a plus 70 emotion. You could give it a scale from minus 100 to plus 100. You had a plus 70 emotion. Maybe you also had a negative emotion with a product, a brand, a decision, a person, whatever you're trying to decide of minus 80. But you also had a very positive experience where you smelt something you really like to do with that product, plus 50. The Bain calculates each single piece of data down there and gives each one like a value. And these values are then all added up together. So in our case, we would have a grand total on this side of plus 120, the other side grand total of minus 80 and plus 120 minus 80 equals 40. So if that was option A, the brain would give it plus 40 on a scale of plus 100 to minus 100. And it will do exactly the same thing for all of the other options. Maybe option B will get minus 20, option C will get plus 70, and option D, that was the one that we really liked, we had the gut feeling for, that is a plus 80. And that makes it the most attractive decision for the brain. It doesn't just stop there though, it does one more final thing. Great example is a TV. Maybe you get the really great gut feeling for this one TV. It's just absolutely amazing, fascinating. The guy talked about it, you read about it. But you once had a mobile phone from that brand that wasn't so good and it broke a lot. So after the brain has calculated each of these different options according to the info it has there and brand and all sorts, it then however goes and has a look at experience with similar things and calculates finally the probability that this magnitude of reward will actually happen. Providing both anticipated reward and probability are high, that becomes the gut feeling. If, however, our anticipated reward of 80 has a very low probability of actually really happening, then the brain would go for the second best option, which would be plus 70, option C. So that's how the brain makes subconscious decisions and gives us gut feelings. Of course, this explanation leaves plenty of questions open. Number one, what is reward for the brain? Number two, what is punishment for the brain? Or number three, maybe, which regions of the brain are involved in this? Please just keep tuned to my channel and I'll be adding videos over the next weeks explaining reward, punishment, which brain regions are involved in this. And of course, the key question, practical application. We'll be looking at how you can apply this in many different regions. Number one, business of leadership. Number two, personal life and making your life better. Number three, marketing. How can we use this knowledge of how the brain makes subconscious decisions to be more successful in life? 
I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to the channel and you'll always get the latest videos posted more or less straight to you. If, however, you're watching this video after I've already made the other videos, you will find them linked right here. Please enjoy and have fun. Please also add into the comments anything you want to know about how the subconscious mind works and I'll do my best to make you a video.